went over there today and he uh, kept circling uh, low above me, making figure eights. Big bird. What if we go over there now if you do the same thing? Would have made a uh, fantastic video. It's about uh, 50 feet above me. Clouds are uh, really pretty up here. Sculpted. I came up to videotape the Golden Eagle, and there were two of them. But they uh, flew before I got up here. over here on the uh, south too. See all the snow they got down on the uh, Tehachapi Mountains to the south. Well, tomorrow morning, if the Golden Eagle is back up on top there, I'm going to look around the back side like I did today and see if we can get a shot of it. Would have been uh, fantastic footage this morning. Camera. Did some exploring around this area down here. It was uh, pretty interesting. Naturally, the, the wind is picking up again. This is the uh, road I came in on right here. And it runs along the Los Angeles aqueduct and down into the wash, back up over to the uh, Highway. There's my camp down there. It's about a half hour before dark, so I think I'll uh, get back down. Uh, two eagles off over on this peak. Sure, big, magnificent birds. You can see the uh, sand blowing down here. This light. wind is a little stronger down there than it is up here. It's supposed to hit 35 tonight. There's Black Mountain. The sun rises over the top of Black Mountain. Apparently that's the volcano where all of this lava rock came from all through here. Reminded me of uh, Kilimanjaro this morning. It was uh, covered in clouds. Summit. Nearly 
scan over here to the sunset. It is pretty uh, seeing it all all at one glance. The uh, camera lens can't do it justice. In a couple more uh, nights the moon will be full. The lights of uh, Ridgecrest down here, just coming on right now. It's about 10 miles away. I don't know if you can really see it. A lot of dust in the air. December 21st. Uh, yesterday I found a cave on the back side of that second formation. I'm going to dig it out. Somebody deliberately uh, filled it in. And, uh, I'll dig it out and see if there's anything in there. Could be interesting. You never know. <laughs> but uh, when I get up there first, I'm going to videotape on the uh, east side of it, and uh, you can see the uh, possibilities for finding things, because they had more campsites over there during the, uh, the old days. This right here is uh, rather interesting. We used to have a campfire in here smoke would go up through this natural uh, vent up on top. There's a lot of uh, old campfire stone rings all through here, probably used for generations. I think this could be the uh, spot where they launched their raids on the stagecoaches that came down through here. Because the uh, campsites are better over here, it's a better place for horses, grazing, it's flatter. And uh, there's a wash that runs through here and it crosses the old stagecoach line. And if that wash was there during the time of the uh, robberies, I suspect that they took the wash down through and waited where the stagecoach line dipped down in. The stagecoach had to slow down and they'd be right there. Uh, the uh, guys up on top wouldn't be able to see them until they were uh, right down in the wash. But uh, that wash would uh, conceal them all the way down to the uh, stage line. I'm going to check down in here too for uh, cartridge, uh, empty uh, casings, brass. As I suspect that uh, there were always shots fired, and once the strong box was brought down, it was shot open on the spot. Stuff was taken out and uh, put in different saddlebags. It'd be too hard carrying a, a strong box. And the people in the stagecoach were either killed immediately or they let him go and they'd take off for the uh, stage station over, over here. And the guys would just stay right there, open up that box, and 
roughly divvy it out and head back into the hills. It's all pure speculation on my part. <laughs> but you like to look at uh, things like that and kind of analyze the situation. There's a lot of uh, monstrous boulders just perched waiting for the uh, next earth tremor or sonic boom from uh, the jet fighter going over. Now here's a uh, campfire site I'm going to uh, move aside and then dig down. Uh, many times they bury their loot underneath their campfire about a foot down and then put the campfire back over the top. Hide it. See the uh, smoke staining. That smoke staining, if the weather doesn't hit it, will stay there for hundreds of years. fella could uh, stand right here and look down toward uh, Mojave and you could see probably see the uh, dust from the stagecoach 15-20 uh, miles away. Same with uh, looking up the uh, valley toward uh, Ridgecrest. The, uh, the old stagecoach line, uh, from what I can see, crossed right through this gulch down here. There's an old, very uh, difficult to see uh, trail down through there that possibly could have been the uh, stagecoach line. Always make a point of checking out these areas that are flat uh, when you can see where the soil's been pulled out. Generally, that's where a person slept. Uh, they create a flat area. And uh, I'll do a lot of metal detecting in those spots, looking for cartridges that fell out of pockets, coins. This is almost like uh, an alley. Makes you wonder whose footsteps you're walking in here. Vasquez, Pancho Villa, Geronimo, Cheese. Looks like they, uh, they may have cut some footholds in here. There's a campfire site here. Possibly a sleeping site, too. It's, it's been scooped out. You've got uh, hundreds and hundreds of these uh, little caves all through here. Cavelets, that's what I call them. Places to stick uh, extra ammo and extra guns. Loot. Check over. I still have uh, 
some checking to do around my uh, campsite over here. But uh, let it break up my routine. Uh, there have been a lot of campfires up in here, too. There's a site here, another site over here. When you find uh, a ring of rocks, and there's absolutely no charcoal or uh, any sign of fire having been in there, you, you know it's quite old. There's another trail that runs through here. Get a horse through there. It takes a long time for uh, things to uh, disintegrate out here, being so dry. A lot of possibilities here with metal detector. I'm a little more thorough than most people. They uh, come out here for a day or two, and of course, most of them have to go back to work. <laughs> that might have something to do with it. That uh, place we were looking down the little alley there. Fascinating just to uh, be able to go back and say to 1850 and spend a, a week here, invisible, so you wouldn't, wouldn't get an arrow in your back. There's another uh, fire, small coal campfire. Here's some uh, areas up here, too, that have been scooped out for sleeping. Check those out. This uh, little canyon here is kind of a dead end if you've got a horse. Because I don't think you're going to get him down here. Canyons. They're almost like uh, miniature fortresses. Not very many ways in and high walls. Now here's another sleeping site. up here I'll check into. Anytime rocks have been uh, moved into a pattern, when you look out of place, those are places to check. I have yet to find uh, any empty cartridges in this area that came from uh, that late period. Uh, getting old. I got something here I'm not really sure about. It's uh, it's too big for a campfire circle. It's about uh, three and a half by three and a half feet. Rocks are sunken in quite deeply. It's been here a long time. Someone did have a campfire here one time. 
But I kind of wonder if it might be uh, the boundary mark to a grave or something. person definitely wasn't uh, laid out unless it was a child. But uh, those rocks have, have sunk in quite a bit here. It's interesting. I don't know if I should uh, dig in there or not. I hate to interrupt anybody's sleep. Well, I'll do some work here. Well, I uh, pretty well checked the east side. <clears throat> now I'm going to check the uh, west side. There's a lot of uh, caves up in here. Check the cave floors. See if buried anything. Now the... Uh, Golden Eagle was setting up here last night. The other day I was standing <clears throat> down here and he was doing figure eights just above my head for about three minutes and uh, didn't have my video camera. But I uh, watched him through uh, binoculars. I wonder about these crevices and cracks up here. I'm not going to check them out. I'm sure with their cowboy boots back in the bandit days, they didn't do uh, too much mountain climbing to stash their loot. And I kind of wonder if somebody might have uh, found a stash right here. They cleaned her up pretty good. It's been uh, reported that two uh, stashes have been found up in these formations here. in there too. All these sticks and small stones. It does look like a natural uh, safe deposit box. It's right next to the uh, trail that they used to use getting around the back of the uh, formation. They're trying to pass a law here in uh, California that no vehicles can use roads that are not maintained by the uh, state or county, unless it's on your own private property or you live on that road. But all of these trails here, and there's thousands of miles that were started by weekend uh, bikers, jeepers. They're just they're completely cutting up the desert with all these. Uh, Necessary roads and trails. It's not a bad uh, idea. Get these bastards off their butts and do some walking. Like these trails back here, they just cut them all over the place. It causes a lot of erosion. People get back in there and they have uh, parties and really trash the place up. You don't find beer bottles in this country. They're all broken. The uh, hills just glitter with glass. It's kind of a shame. Of all the uh, places I've been through so far, California is uh, probably one of the oh, filthiest as far as the countryside. Cans and bottles, trash. I think they still live on the frontier. 
They don't have any bottle deposit law in the state. They've got 10% of the country's population. I think they'd get smart. That uh, partially filled in cave I was talking about is right here. And you have to get up on that ledge to even know it's uh, up there. There's a trail that runs right by. It's rather strange uh, why this rock formation is disintegrating in the middle. We've got all these uh, gigantic boulders down through here that have cascaded down the hillside. This thing down here is about 20 feet tall. But it's uh, it's the center portion that's wider. Now you've got a, a monolith up here that's say 30 feet high, maybe 15 feet wide, that is just barely hanging in there. I think the next uh, earth tremor they have up in this, this country here is going to take her down. But you've got, you've got this big vast thing here, and then hanging in there right beside it is this, this huge piece. Now, if I was up on top, I'd be oh, about that tall. Somebody started uh, digging this thing out. Like I say, it's been filled in deliberately. I'll do a little digging of my own. Could be some vast wealth. Yeah, you could walk right by it down here and not even realize it was up there. Now here's that uh, rock I was talking about. It's, it's at an angle. And that right there is probably the keystone. But it's, uh, it's really not even attached to the hill here, it's all broken loose. Make a hell of a video if I was standing here when it went. <laughs> it's a colossal thing. Now she'd roll down here and probably knock over the, uh, the pins. Jeep going by right at that moment. Full of niggers. I mean, colored people. That's right.
This uh, formation here is quite a bit bigger than the one I'm camped next to. There's a uh, Walt's place down there. It's a long way down there, I think I'll uh, go away from the edge. Quite the uh, quite the picture there to see that thing go. I'll go over there and kick that piece. Of Not today. Do you have how? Uh, cold it is in the shade here. Rain last night, you get a little water in these uh, pockets on top. The sun hasn't hit this over here yet. Oh, get my strap out of the way. Even though this is Southern California, it's 3,000 feet. That's uh, that's high desert. Get down around Yuma, and it's two and three hundred feet above sea level. And uh, down there right now, it's 70, 80, 90. I'm really considering uh, <laughs> heading for Yuma. Well, it's not bad in the sun, but uh, I'll tell you, in the shade, she doesn't warm up at all. I uh, try to keep this camera in the sun. It runs a lot better. When it uh, gets down around 50, it starts getting uh, a little noisy. That's, it's kind of interesting having that cave right there. I'm going digging, see what I come up with. It's probably the uh, gateway to hell. <laughs> I'll dig out the devil. Start removing uh, ancient crosses. I'll know that uh, it's quite a step right here. Let's say about 60 feet. Got a runny nose. I can. Uh, I can picture a motorcyclist. Guy comes up here with a trail bike, and he goes haul assing out through here, and zoom! Be a shock. You probably noticed I'm making small talk. I want to fill this uh, cartridge up and send it to you. Merry Christmas. Uh, Get the shovel. I brought my uh, long hand shovel, a bucket, so I could put the stuff in the bucket. So once I get back in there, it'll be hard to 
shoveling out. Just fill the bucket up, drag it out. Yeah, they got uh, more snow down here in the hatcher piece. And this over here is part of the uh, Paiute Mountains behind the, these hills here. This is uh, part of the Paiutes. Now, all of this mountain range down through here, it's all part of the Sierra Nevada mountain chain. But each uh, section of mountains will have, uh, have its own name. Well, whoever started the uh, tunnel up here apparently found a deposit of bauxite. It's quite common around here. It's real, uh, real light stuff. It's almost chalky powder. It's used in making uh, aluminum. Originally, there's probably a large splotch of it up on the uh, cliff face here and they just started going in after it. Let's see if there's any valuable metals. metal detector and check some of these caves up here. I've noticed that the uh, clouds seem to be captured by the, the higher peaks. Just never seem to make it over here. amazing. Uh, four miles away over here you can have all kinds of snow and over here it will rain instead of snow. That's about uh, 6,000 feet. I'm at uh, about 3,000, 3,200 actually. Let's see how the uh, clouds mountain lion in here. Let's go on and take a look. I find one thing interesting. On one of the old style uh, Winchester Repeating Arms Company, 44 caliber Winchester Centerfire. One of the uh, first centerfire cartridges they came out with. Let's see if I can get this on uh, manual close up. It's it's an old one. Uh, pack rats will just pick up anything. You'll find 
coins, little shells, skulls of their own kind, bones. Now this is worth keeping. This is the uh, first uh, decent thing I found over here. I don't know when they first came out with the uh, centerfire brass, but uh, this is probably pre-1900. Pretty good caves over here. Be on the uh, north side of the formation. Hot summertime caves. Well, the sun. It hasn't blown over. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, last night that wind must have been hitting 40, 45. First it hits the truck, then it hits the trailer. I always like to park that truck on the wind side. Uh, let's see, the best way, I think, would be right through here. I've got this uh, camera down on my hip. I'll have to see how this turns out. This is December 22nd. I can't recall seeing uh, cloud formations in Michigan like they have uh, out here on some days. I think when the clouds go through the mountains, uh, the passes and the mountaintops shape uh, like these funny shapes. Not nearly so windy today. I'm going to uh, go down here where the stagecoach stop uh, or the uh, stagecoach line went across the gully. See what I can find. Maybe shell casings or uh, shattered padlocks or whatever. I'm going to go over here, uh, do some more metal detecting next few days. Check it out some more. And another place I'm going to check is uh, this peak back here. Just for the heck of it. Well, last night was 24 degrees. That's the coldest night I've had in here in California so far. Yesterday's high was uh, 46 in the shade. 
This uh, this high desert is uh, it's a lot cooler than the low desert down around Yuma right now. I think it's in the 70s. May just head on down there. There's uh, things to do and see down there. Plus, there's a few claims uh, that I can check out. We've got a jet up here doing acrobat acrobatics on the trailer. Now that wind is so bad out of the uh, west, I moved my camp from here over to here. I think uh, that rock might help. I hope so. The trailer rocks all night long. It's awful hard to sleep. The old uh, stagecoach line down there, where it crossed that real deep wash. And, uh, didn't do any detecting, but I'll uh, go back down and check it out some more. Yeah, I like to change my view about once every uh, four or five days. That way, uh, while I'm writing my notes or watching television, I can. getting a lot of snow down here. It's starting to sprinkle here just a little bit. Of course that wind is so strong it probably carries the uh, raindrops 10 or 15 miles ahead of the uh, cloud cover. I don't know how this will uh, show up on television, but it's pretty here. Golly, that's not too far. Uh, that Joshua tree right there just might be growing on top of uh... Oh, good morning. December 23rd today. Usually in the morning it's dead still. Then about 9 o'clock wind picks up. Geez, I, last night, uh, even though I moved the trailer, table, lawn chairs, chair, or way over there, I go back or go over and pick them up this morning. Didn't do any damage, but uh, the wind is aggravating. Rigged up a uh, thing to catch uh, rainwater last night. Worked pretty good. I've got about uh, four inches in my hand down here. I use it for uh, washing and cleaning. I don't drink it. A little ice last night, too. <laughs> Got down to uh, 29 degrees. A little viscous.
I'll tell you, when you're you're camping out the sticks like I am, and you're in a dry environment, uh, you really appreciate water. <laughs> Normally, when I uh, camp in a spot like this, I like to uh, stay right there until I leave the area. And when I leave the area, then I stop and get groceries and, and that sort of thing. I hate to uh, have to take my trailer, pull into town, get groceries, water, gasoline, and drive back out to the same spot again. Unless I'm a campground host or something like this, I'll uh, run back and forth to town. But this place here, I'll, I'll stay about two more weeks. And uh, go into town, send out the mail, and uh, groceries, gas, and water. Then I'll probably uh, find a spot over near uh, Randsburg. I want to check that area out. I'm not getting rich, but I'm having a lot of fun. And uh, when I first started this, this trip, it was basically uh, just to have a good time. Although I am making some money, but <laughs> not a lot. But it's a, it's a fantastic uh, experience to be able to do what I'm doing right now. Living adventure. And I dug a hole for my basin. Then I've got a bit of a trench along this one side. All the water flows this way and down into it. Normally, if it's uh, still, like I've mentioned, I'll, uh, I'll use my awning. But when you've got a high uh, wind like we've had for the last four or five days, that awning would just rip right off in no time. And then my tub sits back here and gets a uh, runoff that comes off the uh, top of the trailer. But it uh, really saves on the, uh, the drinking water and the water used for cooking. That way I make uh, fewer trips in town. I've got about 40 gallons of water uh, when all my containers are filled. Beautiful day. I just wish the whole day would be uh, still like this. But I know the wind's going to kick up again. Last night it must have hit 40. Coming around the uh, side of this rock formation here. But where I was parked out here, it was hitting 50 and 60. The, the uh, bushes were just laid almost flat to the ground. I have a feeling that uh, when the eagles and the hawks are nesting up here that uh, certain individuals are going up and shooting them because I've been finding uh, shotgun shells right up and around the top up here and uh, there's just nothing up there that you would possibly hunt with a shotgun unless you're after uh, those birds of prey sure what they use them for. Indian ceremonial dress uh, head feathers or something like that or stuff them. I wish I could catch somebody doing that in the act. I'd uh, do the three S's on them. Shoot them, shovel them, and shut up. That kind of uh, human being uh, to me just has no right to exist. destroy endangered species, oh, like the rhino in Africa. Uh, Karen uh, in Connecticut sent me uh, an article on uh, the African poaching. Uh, Karen's the girl I was on safari with. 
And there was an enclosure in one of the parks that had six rhinos in it. They were penned up. And about 40 poachers came in with automatic weapons and trucks and shot the place up, uh, shot the six rhinos, and then took a chainsaw and cut the, uh, the horns off, which I thought was pretty grotesque. But it uh, really, really pisses you off. You know, when you go over there and you, <clears throat> you see these animals, and there's so few of them now anyway, and then you get a group of guys going in like that. And, you know, just senseless killing. Well, of course, they're making money doing it, but... Uh, oh, the president of Kenya passed a, a decree that uh, all poachers from now on after that incident will be shot on sight. And I think that's... That's the way to handle it, because uh, these guys, they go to trial, they spend a few months or years in prison, they get out, they do the same thing again. I, I think the death penalty is very appropriate. Too damn many human beings on this planet uh, as it is, and fewer and fewer species of animals. That mankind has to get its uh, priority straightened out. About once a year, they should, or about one day out of the year, they should have an open season. And humans. I know you folks don't share my views, but uh, <laughs> you, sometimes you really get thoroughly uh, disgusted with things that go on in the world. No answers. Well, today I'm going to go up here around the uh, this rock outcrop and uh, do some metal detecting. of snow up there on uh, Paiute Mountain. I like these Joshua trees. They're uh, really different. It's like the uh, pack rats have been nibbling off the ends of these canes. Many times pack rats will make a nest in there and uh, keep some moisture in the tree and fertilizes, protects the roots. Oh, here's a raven. Uh, this snow over here will be gone in probably two hours once the sun gets high. This is a pack rat nest right here. He made his house out of uh, cow chips. <laughs> uh, he's got pieces of 
glass he brought up here. They like anything shiny. Bullets. There's a here's a rabbit skull. They like to put a lot of bones on top of their their house. Uh, this is what a uh, pack rat looks like, bushy tail. Actually, they're in the uh, squirrel family. You can see what I mean uh, when I say they, they fertilize these bushes and uh, Joshua trees when they build their ne nest next to them. Plus it holds the moisture, keeps the moisture in there. Keeps the uh, wind from blowing the sand away from the roots. So actually they, uh, they're a real benefit to the uh, vegetation out here. I found a 38 uh, special shell in there. Now these Joshua trees are really popular with uh, landscapers. People like to have them in their yards. Very uh, exotic, tropical. These uh, canes or leaves on the side, they help keep the uh, plant cool during the summer. Well, this is uh, about all the snow I want to come in contact with this winter, right here. Feels like Michigan snow. Yeah, I, uh, I vowed I'd spend the rest of my life avoiding snow shovels, snow tires, Getting stuck in the snow. Not the only time I'll run into uh, bad snow here is going through uh, some of the passes. And I don't have to go through any passes now because I've already crossed over when I went through the uh, Tehachapi Mountains near the town of Tehachapi. When I was up at uh, Beaver Creek Campground, there was a fellow there with his two boys. They were up uh, trout fishing. And he worked for the uh, prison there in Tehachapi. It's a women's prison. And uh, here's a guard. He told me some pretty, pretty wild stories. Well, anyway, he uh, 
He's retired now and he's, well, actually disabled. Hurt his back. And uh, now he owns a gun shop in Tehachapi. But uh, he's quite a character. He, uh, he looks like a cowboy that stepped out of a picture in the 1880s. He's got the build and the, the square jaw, mustache, the drawl, wears a six-shooter. Hell of a nice guy. I stopped to uh, see if he was home when I went through there, and uh, unfortunately he wasn't. Well, time to take out the detector. I uh, charge these batteries up every night. Of course, I didn't use it yesterday, so I didn't have to charge it. These are a lot of fun. I, uh, I've always enjoyed metal detectors. I've had them ever since I was, uh, oh, 12 or 13. Started out with my cheapo. This thing here runs about, uh, right now, about 550. But it's pretty advanced. It's got quite the circuitry. Tells you what you've got down there before you even uh, start digging. tools right there. I find these uh, army shovels are ideal. You just scrape away. And if you get something big, you start digging. I picked this up at the last uh, gun show I went to up there with Dad and uh, got it for three bucks. Uh, while I was walking out uh, through here yesterday, I put up about a half a dozen jackrabbits. These are the uh, black-tailed Mojave jacks. When they uh, take off out of these uh, clumps, you can actually uh, hear them because they, uh, they're so big-footed, they kick up rocks and gravel and so when you hear the uh, sound like that, you look up and there's the rabbit. I'm walking down to the uh, ambush site where they held up the stages. Uh, I'm going down there this morning because the wind is, uh, hasn't kicked up yet. But uh, a jackrabbit just took off out of... Uh, spot right here. And here's his uh, his bed. Makes a little little hollow in the underneath the bush or next to it. And there's a track we cut out. Some tracks. Usually, they run straight away, and you can get uh, within about 20, 30 feet of them before they take off. They're pretty easy to shoot. Uh, the reason I don't get them on video is you don't know when they're going to take off, what direction. You'd have to have a video camera running uh, constantly. And uh, my standby button doesn't seem to work anymore. Well, it looks like an old prospector didn't make it. Oh, must have been his horse. Or maybe his 
wife. Yeah, somebody uh, apparently picked up the skull. Well, you can see what the uh, rabbits do to the uh, Joshua trees. Uh, babies are sharp too. If you uh, bump into them, you'll bleed almost instantly. It's like a needle. They aren't flexible. They're uh, very solid. I'm sure once the golden eagles start nesting, uh, during uh, February, January, and March. We'll thin these jackrabbits out. I'll tell you, below the uh, nests of the eagles and the hawks up in the uh, rocks up here, there'll be just mounds of uh, bones. Uh, antelope squirrels, uh, jackrabbits, Mojave uh, cottontail, lizards, snakes. This is the old uh, stagecoach route right here, running down to Mojave. Now my theory is that when the stage crossed wash and going up to uh, Freeman's Junction. When they cross this wash, the uh, banditos who were up here originally saw the stage coming 20 miles away and they came the wash runs right down through here. They came down the wash on their horses. They couldn't be seen. And they'd be they'd be waiting right here. Stagecoach would get up here. They'd have to slow down to get up the bank over here. And uh, so I, I theorize that most of the, uh, the holdups took place right in this spot here. Because the uh, stage wouldn't have enough speed to uh, get up that uh, bank and wash and then be able to take off because uh, the guys would be right here or else they'd be right here. You might have a fellow hiding here with a shotgun. When that stage got up there, he'd jump up and be all ready for him. But I'm going to metal detect in this area here. Might come up with some cartridges or uh, maybe a padlock off a strong box or something. But I, I think if they fired their pistols, uh, being six shooters, they wouldn't bother reloading unless they uh, shot off six shots down here, then they might reload down here. But I have a feeling that 44 shell I found on the other side of this formation was uh, dumped there after, after they reloaded on that back side there after they uh, made the robbery. Now if they had a, a rifle lever action then as they fired their shells and they'd be dropping cartridges around here. Not the pistols. 
Well, let's see what I can find. Somebody uh, ripped the sign off right here, took it off the pole, and uh, threw it over here, and I stuck it back over here. It took a lot of effort to uh, rip that off because it got some pretty big washers to hold the thing on. The wind didn't do it. I just want to say there, there's too many people in the world. You've got too many negative types. You can see my camp over here. Now this uh, camera is 6 power and they've just come out with a 12 power. And the new 12 power camera you can get uh, 6 hours on one tape. So that would save you a little money. Just found uh, something interesting over here. It uh, looks like it possibly could date from that period, 1850, 1900. It's uh, blacksmith made. It's not uh, manufactured by uh, one of the big companies. Now this, this target is quite deep too. It's a hook for something, but you can see uh, uh, it's, it's not really uniform, plus it's been hammered, it's flat, it's not round like your uh, poured manufactured uh, tools or implements, blacksmith made. It's a nice little find. That, uh, it's not really worth anything, but uh, it's it kind of tells me something. <laughs> yeah, you know, this is uh, no doubt before 1900, and uh, possibly it might have had something to do with the uh, stagecoach line. I'd say, but uh, this target was down uh, quite deep, uh, down there about uh, oh nine to ten inches. Had a good. Good signal on it. Now, a pistol would uh, show up at that depth, too. Let's say the, this is conjecturing again. Let's say the robbers tell the stage driver, throw you down your guns, and they throw them down and they get blown away, and the uh, pistol gets stepped on by a horse, ground down in. So it's possible you could have uh, firearms or something laying around here. I'll spend a few hours now because uh, when I find something, uh, even uh, something as mediocre as this hook, that uh, gets me going. I start concentrating on uh, an area around that spot, and it's going to work out. Well, I. Uh, just found a goodie up here. <laughs> this was definitely uh, where the holdups took place. Because I found, I'll show you here in just a minute. It's right in the, uh, the old uh, stagecoach route. This is where it was. I'm going to check for more. But this is definitely uh, of that time. It's a Remington dash UMC 44 W centerfire. Now the W, I don't know if Winchester at one time owned the Remington uh, firearms company or not. I, I just don't know. Could be uh, Winchester Center Fire. They might have borrowed the patent. But the primer is uh, the old type primer, and uh, it doesn't have the deep flange like you have on your newer 44 cals. 
This uh, this is the same type of shell I took out of uh, Colchis' stronghold. I don't uh, know what the period would be. You'd almost have to check with the uh, manufacturer to see when they're putting these shells out when they stop. That's a good sign. Uh, now I shall concentrate through this area, see if I can pick up some more. Now in A1 shape, if they aren't damaged like this one is, uh, they're worth a few bucks. Now the 45 70s and the 4060s and the old Buffalo cartridges, uh, they go for 25 and up if they're in excellent condition. And I've got about a half a dozen of them I found in uh, Colchisa Stronghold. So, even these old shells are worth a little money. Boy, I'm tickled to death to find that plane right there. It, uh, sometimes I feel uh, almost odd to be standing in a place like this. And 150, well, 1850 on through uh, possibly 1890s, uh, uh, they had stages running through here and they had holdups. And to be standing on, on this ground where they had, well, they had uh, over half a dozen holdups in this one spot. They all originated from uh, Robber's Roost. And it's hard to say how many old prospectors with their pockets full of gold were knocked over by uh, Vasquez and his Mexican banditos. Plus, they robbed uh, a lot of small communities. They'd go in and just uh, rip the hell out of the place. He was almost on uh, a par with Pancho Villa. Well, get back to work here. Yeah, I'm going to check the uh, trail probably down to this spot. Just check one lane and this one. And there's another one that runs beside it. If you had another stagecoach coming, this one going, uh, they probably passed the, this location. I uh, made some pretty good finds right here. From this point right here, the wash, about 50 feet, I uh, found a uh, 44 caliber here, the old style. Found a WRA company. You all know what that is. 32 Smiths and Wesson. Now this is the old style cartridge, the old primer, the old uh, brass. Found two of those here. Found a 44 caliber here. Another 32 here. Uh, 32 over here. I don't know if the uh, stage drivers carried light guns like that or if it was some latter day Nimrod shooting away, but it's the old style uh, cartridge. A few of the other little things I found here. This uh, screwdriver was in the road. And this old wrench was in the road. We should find a lot of pieces of wire. And there's a lot of, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think uh, the H is Henry. Or it could be uh, Harrison. 22 shells. And I uh, don't know exactly what this went to. Broken piece. Uh, let's see, I found a, now this right here, it's the old style primer, the old style uh, 
brass, and it's, uh, let's see, FA513. I don't know uh, what that would be. Maybe somebody's personal reload. And I found a part of a slug. The slugs were right in the uh, road. I kind of wonder if my imagination again, if it was being shot downward from the stagecoach. And uh, here's another. This is a old lead here. And half of something. I don't know what this thing is. I should always find these damn things. The guy who invented these should have died at birth or been aborted. And when you find these, they uh, turn out to be, well, on the meter it says a quarter. Then you dig them up and you've got a piece of trash. Uh, and then you find uh, things like bolts, washers. Now, the, the only place I've checked so far is from where I found that big hook, right here, down through here, and where the tripod is. Now I still have this section of the road over here, and then the other two sections over on the other side. Now I th figure anything in the wash is going to be fairly deep if it was a big piece of metal. If it was light stuff, uh, it could be two miles down in the valley. But uh, I'll completely uh, clean this area out, check it all. Those old cartridges, they, they tickle me when I find them because uh, they're definitely history. Well, back then, you know, people didn't uh, blow off ammunition like they do today because it was it was expensive. It was uh, valued because you needed the ammunition just for your survival. I'll show you one of these 32s here. I don't know when uh, 32 Special came out, but uh, this is the old style brass. It doesn't have the deep flange. on manual. Uh, there we go. You've got uh, Winchester Repeating Arms Company. Now that's that's an old logo. They uh, stopped using that. I don't know the exact date, but it's been a long time. And then uh, 32 Smith & Wesson. So it's uh, that's an old uh, old cartridge. It's not uh, anything new. I don't know when they started putting this uh, crimp in though. Dad, uh, you can check all these things out and let me know because I'm going to send you all these cartridges from this location and uh, from uh, Kochi Stronghold. Well, I should have brought my lunch. I'm having so much fun down here. Didn't bring my water. I'd have to run all the way back over there, come back again, or I could tough it out. It's about a mile, I think. Well, this is proving to be a very nice spot. I, I like finding this stuff. Well, the uh, tools, I think I can clean them up and make use of them. They're uh, newer stuff. You know, they aren't uh, anything old. Yeah, this one right here is... Okay, it's got... Uh, on it. Make sure it's 
sure what Dilma is, but maybe SK. I figured uh, somebody came flying through that wash and they, they hit this high spot here and things just started uh, jumping out the back end. Well, I'm going to check this over here now, this other Y, the wishbone. Well, this, uh, this other fork over here, I didn't find uh, very much, and uh, it wasn't really old. All the uh, old cartridges are over here. But I found uh, oh, a Remington uh, UMC 38 Special. It's the old uh, style brass. And then the one on the right is an F or an LC4. It's uh, newer brass. It's got that groove around the uh, flange there. And just a lot, of, a lot of junk. One square nail. But uh, I think that this road over here must have been put in a lot later. This, this other fork. And this was the original uh, stagecoach route. Now all of the uh, old shells that I found were from this point on up to, uh, well for some reason my uh, camera cut out. But anyway, all the old shells were in this section here. No old shells over here. And uh, I think what happened, this is fantasy, well, I'm imagination. Stagecoach is coming up here. You guys are sitting up high. They look over here, and here's the, uh, the banditos. So they start shooting. And, uh, well, very possibly, too, they start shooting even if they don't see anybody. Because this is historically a place where the, the robbers stayed. They probably hit a lot of stages here. And when the stages came up to this point, like they used to do in Vietnam, they just start shooting anyway. And beat them to the uh, punch. Right about on the high ground here is where uh, most of the, uh, the old cartridges were dug out. So if they looked up here and saw horsemen, they could take it for granted they'd better start popping some rounds. Or if they looked down here, saw the same situation. Because until they got up to even sitting up high on that stage, you know, if they're back here, you really couldn't see down over in here or over here. Once you get up here, start shooting. Well, tomorrow, I'm going to check the other side over here and see what I come up with. It'll be interesting. And then uh, the last place I'll check will be the wash from here on down. Let's see what I come up with. Well, head back and have some dinner. Drink cold water. It's nice and warm today. I took my shirt off. It's kind of a switch from what, what I've had. It's been so darn windy, and then when it's uh, windy, it, uh, it's a lot colder. Wind chill. Oh, we made it, Abdullah. Abdullah's my imaginary African sidekick. 
was in Hemingway's uh, Green Hills of Africa, Hemingway's Guide. show you. You just press this button right here. Ah. Must be getting old. I <clears throat> seem to groan more when I sit down. <laughs> oh, I can't believe the news this week. Uh, plane crash in Scotland. Santa Claus stuck up an armored car. Uh, three policemen hijacked an armored car. Well, they were dressed like policemen. A propane truck blew up in uh, Memphis, killed six people. Well, what else is there? Two uh, Peace Corps workers in South Africa, a couple girls, were going down this steep road. They missed the turn, dropped down about 3,000 feet. <laughs> well, I'm glad the only problem I've got is uh, being able to sleep at night when the wind blows, getting sunburned. You now, even being way out here, I like to uh, like to keep up on the news, even if it is negative. Beautiful day today. It got up to 48, but uh, that was in the shade. Out in the sun, it's it's always warmer. Tomorrow's supposed to be 58. <coughs> Just two days before Christmas. Uh, I won't ask you what your weather is back there because I I know what it is. <laughs> If 
bunch of uh, ravens down there flying by. Had a little bit of snow here, but it's just uh, in the shade of some of these plants. Uh, Walt down there told me one time he had 13 inches of snow at his place, <clears throat> and by the end of the day it was gone. But they really had some flooding too. Well, talking to uh, a fellow who lives in uh, Ridgecrest, the guy that was up here with his two boys, last summer there were two people in this. Uh, <clears throat> washed down here and there was a flash flood and it caught both of them so he said while I'm working down here to be looking for bones or clothing or whatever well that stagecoach back in the 1870s when that went down and, uh, five people died so uh, there's seven bodies Three mile stretch here someplace. She'll send you a skull. <laughs> Beautiful day though, I really enjoyed it. A lot of fun. Ravens are circling up here now. There's uh, three, four, six of them. Sometimes you can get pretty close to them. Uh, they're, they're almost team. I don't think uh, people shoot at them out here. Now the place I was working uh, today was just down here, about a mile. I'll tell you though, once that sun goes behind that rock formation, she gets cool instantly. Doesn't take. Uh, take long. And then in the morning uh, the sun rises over here uh, over Black Mountain and uh, warms the trailer up pretty quickly. I usually get up about six, turn the uh, heat on and then uh, wait till she warms up and uh, later in the book for all the jiggling with the camera. Let's see if I'm still focused again. Yep. It's supposed to rain uh, Christmas Day here. 50, about 58 degrees. Winds supposed to be about 35 miles an hour. Oh, here, the wind is a pain in the butt, because when that uh, thing kicks up, it just blows and blows and blows all day long. But it's night when it blows, it just keeps you awake. The trailer just wobbles back and forth, even though I put the, uh, the uh, anchor brackets down. On the top, Kick in. Sounds like somebody's walking on top of it. Oh, in your letter, Ma, uh, Newt, Keith, and Al all had bypass operations. Uh, it must really be a, a quite the uh, thing now because they had three uh, country western singers this in the last week at uh, bypasses. It's probably good living, you know, eat all that fat food, and don't get the exercise.
I haven't been over to uh, Randsburg over here in, uh, oh, let's see, about two weeks, two and a half weeks. The only mail I've picked up is that, that batch, the, the first batch. So uh, probably next week I'll drive back over and pick it up. It's about, uh, Randsburg's about five miles east, straight east. Usually what I do, I <coughs> drive over to Ridgecrest, get my groceries, water, gasoline, and I take the road along the mountain, go over to Ransburg, pick up the mail, and I drive across to the valley, make a big triangle. But I always hate to leave this trailer up here. Uh, sitting all by itself because I've heard of so many instances out here. Uh, people shoot up your trailer when you're gone and break into it. In a lot of the places that I've camped, I'll see the uh, reflector plastic on the ground. And when I see that reflector plastic, uh, you know, you're reflectors up there. When I see that stuff laying on the ground, that tells me that, that uh, somebody had a problem there. They're, they're breaking out the uh, reflectors, shooting them or whatever. Oh, I saw that situation up there on uh, Black Mountain when I camped up there. You can see little, little piles of reflector plastic. Well, tonight I should get a good sleep because the wind isn't too bad. It's out of the uh, southwest right now, about five miles an hour. So if I'm lucky, see you tomorrow. It's kind of a pretty evening uh, out here. I'll, I'll take some video of the clouds. Somebody just drove up in a yellow vent. A ravishing blonde, I'll have to go over and introduce myself. Probably should shave first. Well, right now it's five o'clock in the evening. It's kind of a pretty shot. Looks like the uh, two ears of a wolf sticking up. See the uh, lines of cars coming up from Mojave, driving up the Indian Wells Valley. Those are car headlights down there. See the uh, lights of uh, Ridgecrest down below. This is the uh, main part of the city, a strip of uh, shopping malls, fast food places. They have an area down there with a Kentucky Fried Chicken, uh, Burger Chef, and McDonald's on the corners. Call it Junk Food Junction. 
The uh, China Lake Naval Weapons Center is right here where you see the brightest lights. sun goes down, I usually uh, do a little bit of reading and then I hit the hay early, usually by six. Not too much to do up here on the mountain. Well, this is the morning of December 24th, Christmas Eve. Rather cool, blustery day today. Had some rain last night. Here comes the sun. Got down to uh, 33 last night. Yeah, I think we're going to get uh, get some snow up in the mountains again today. Wind is out of the uh, right out of the west. I guess they're having some pretty good storms out on the uh, coast, uh, 20, 30 foot waves coming in. This is an extinct volcano. I think it's extinct. And this is a smoke cinder cone right here. Sunsets, sunrises out here, and they're usually magnificent, especially when you've got clouds. I'm going back in, I've got hot coffee going, and it's pretty chilly out here. About a 30 mile per hour wind right now. Well, I'm making some Christmas pancakes. <laughs> Well, I didn't think I'd be uh, homesick, for, you know, during Christmas, but uh, tomorrow's the day, and I'm homesick for you guys. Of course, I've, I've experienced so many Christmas, Christmases with you. I I know what it's all about. Kids will be running around, excited. Dad and the guys will be up in the gun room with a Miller in hand. I'll miss it. I'm going to go down to the uh, Salton Sea tomorrow and uh, spend Christmas with some folks I met up at the campground in Sir uh, Totten. Actually, they were the host, camp host, Sarah Totten, during uh, June of 
June and July and August, and uh, then I was camp post in the spring, and during uh, September, October, and November after they left. There are the people with the uh, that had the dog they were going to have put to sleep, and they wanted some video taken of it, so I, I took the video. Plus, Don is the one with the dredge down on the river. I'm not sure if I'm cutting off my head or not. It's, uh, it's rather difficult judging through that viewfinder where you're going to be hitting up here. I suppose I could check it out. Looks good. Good job, huh? in the oven. <laughs> it's a nice trailer, but uh, you can always use more storage space. Well, this is December 26. We were supposed to get uh, some heavy snow the other day, but it uh, never materialized. They, they got some up here in Walker Pass, though. A lot of it smelted at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah, Walt Barker came by. I was camped up here, and he said, you know, Steve, we're supposed to get a lot of snow tonight. Why don't you come down and camp at my place. As the road coming uh, down is pretty uh, washed out, and if it washed out more, I'd never get out. So I uh, moved my camp down to his place. But he's a heck of a nice guy. Charge up my 
camera batteries, trailer batteries. Temperature this morning is about 24. Right now it's about uh, 48, but the wind makes it quite a bit colder. Wind is blowing a gale all day. He's got a pool here, but I, uh, I don't think I'll use it. <laughs> it's chilly. The uh, wash with the uh, supposed gold deposit that was lost is right here. So I'll be working this for a week or two, going out into the valley about three miles away. Now this is uh, Walt's house over here. Been over here twice. I haven't seen his wife yet. Uh, they're in their 60s. This property is owned by the LA uh, Water and Power Company. And uh, they furnish his house. And propane, electricity. Park the truck over here. Wish it was more in the shade though. I uh, like that sun. I hate burning the uh, propane all day. They've got a chicken coop back here. Instant place for garden. Keep the rabbits out. Got a lot of uh, cottonwood trees here too. It's been uh, almost a month since I've been close to trees like this. And these are, I think I'll have to look them up. I think they're 